Hello everybody, welcome to another daily dose of gaming news and all that good stuff. Uh, before I proceed, I, I didn't post anything yesterday, got a lot of busy, but fortunately there was like no, nothing to talk about worth uh, mentioning here for a video, even if I had time to do one. I didn't even have time to make a post uh, telling you that I was not able to do a daily video. Uh, but yeah, uh, before I proceed, uh, also published on Rumble and I'm on all these socials, so let's get started. Not a lot today, today it's Sunday, so not a lot of news. Um, we got some interesting things here regarding uh, like Chinese uh, GPU chip makers and everything, mainly because I think it's uh, regarding AI market that they and the fact that there is some um, sanctions, I think, or, or, or something like that, that uh, uh, basically uh, restricts uh, cheap manufacturing selling uh, to China. So they are trying to get around by manufacturing them themselves the, the chips, which can be good or bad, depending uh, on the point of view for me. It seems interesting that uh, the fact that, of course, that if they uh, don't have the chance to buy uh, like high-end chips money for AI and computing in general for science and, and of course other 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 stuff uh, they will start making and they have uh, uh, resources to do so um, and of course because the, it's a market that is uh, it's in its infancy per se uh, we're going to start to see a, a lot of like startups trying to uh, enter the market uh, mainly i think they they a lot of them are uh, funded through um, the government it, itself and it's the case of this one um which is a startup uh dangling uh it was found in 2017 uh it got from investment of uh, from the country so the government itself to uh, make um, in this case it's more uh, aimed at uh, being compatible with cuda and um uh, whatever it is, an OpenCL uh, compatibility on, on the chips itself. So I suppose it's for like, like mainstream uh, applications per se, because Kuda is very open base. We got a lot of applications uh, from manufacturing. Kuda has a lot of implementation there. Uh, of course, uh, they will also uh, try to attract uh, customers through um they, it's usually it's it's a good start for uh, gaming gpus because uh, there is some uh, i think in terms of uh, how uh, designing chips uh, because of usually how games and and of course the production um production uh, yeah production applications uh, they tend to be can be complex to it enough so it can push the, the limits on the on the gpus themselves i think they, they they will start a little bit by there because they it's basically also test market uh, like the mtt uh the, the moore's thread the, the chinese manufacturer i think it's the sad i saw a video uh, from uh gamers nexus reviewing that that uh, gpu it, it, it's um, uh, chinese exclusive but they managed to snag one of them uh, and yeah, it's a poor GPU at the moment. Uh, it has a limited amount of uh, um, uh, compatibility with some games. Uh, it's only the, like DirectX 11 compatible. It's not DirectX 12, so does it even manage to to, do, to play even the, the 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 latest game and the older other games? It's very very poor in terms of performance. But uh, again, uh, from all of those uh, like startups and and other. Uh, other companies there are going to try to get a hand on this kind of market which is start to lack on china for sure we will see one that might be able to compete and i think in a, like in a small time frame will be able to a certain degree start competing with intel because when the, the, the from what i understood the chinese when they put their minds on they will uh, they will reach there uh, one way or the other and this GPU from this specific um, startup, uh, Deng Ling, um, I think they, 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 they will start doing some stuff. We might see something from them in the near future, like maximum two years. At the moment, what they have, it's like very basic. It's like uh, power consumption, so it's low TDPs, not a lot of uh, teraflops uh, per... Um, it doesn't even have like the the fp32 yet um so it's still uh and i think this is more for server stuff at the moment from what i understood 
So, but they are doing, uh, they are wrapping up production for sure in R&D um, regarding the, the, the GPU manufacturing and if, uh, and probably we'll see some more exclusive on their market. And I think it will be like an issue if they don't resolve this situation with the sanctions and, and, and all that stuff. We might see, f for example, uh, American based companies that, for example, Nvidia, even uh, to a certain degree Intel and, and other companies that uh, sell this kind of high end chips, if they are uh, basically. Um, they can lose this market, which is a big market at the moment, uh, from what I understand, Chinese start wrapping up their economy in the overall scheme of things, and they will need a lot of chips to do that. Uh, also, in the, in the technology market, and if they start being se too self-sufficient, they can just uh, ditch from, not in a year, but in a few years, like, I don't know, uh, usually they do plans long term, like in 10 years, we might see... Um, an overtake on, on Chinese chip manufacturing because these things always take like time to do some R&D manufacturing and, and testing and fine-tuning all this kind of technology uh, for example Nvidia and TSMC uh, they've been uh, for 30 years plus on the on the, this uh, high-end um, chip manufacturing also Intel and Intel when they managed to introduce themselves even having like 10 plus years on um, iGPUs uh, when they start making this one the Intel Arc it's not like it's competitive in the like in the low end but it's not like high end competitive with Nvidia or even with AMD so it will take some time um, but yeah best of luck <laughs> because <clears throat> this, if this kind of technology gets very competitive and to a certain degree can uh, reach uh, uh, international markets and not just only be on uh, um, China exclusive uh, we might see some competition uh, very high competition in uh, like a 10 years time frame give or take I don't know I'm not an engineer so I don't have like a slide of school but this is my perception of what I've been seeing around uh, but yeah regarding uh, Chinese uh, especially GPUs because the GPUs uh, are more um, versatile in how kind of operations they can do and how you can uh, modify them uh, like some things in terms of hardware to make certain operations it's just like the AI chips uh, you always need uh, to a certain degree uh, a CPU uh, but you can I think you can even like morph certain parts of the GPU to work like a CPU from what I understand uh, but yeah it's going to be very interesting to see what's going to happen in the long term um, the, the main the main issue with uh, a lot of what we can call western companies they usually think about uh, quarterly profits and the main thing that chinese has for have from themselves is they think long term so they think wh where we want to be in 10 years 15 years 20 years where we want to be in this kind of uh, um, or market on on the, this area of economy or something like that and they make plans for that it will take a little bit of time, but in the end, usually it pays off for them. Um, while um, a lot of people uh, from, let's say, Western companies like North America, so Europe, they just the corporations are they have the mentality of just quarterly earnings and uh, infinite growth, and usually this doesn't work very well in the long term because uh, you cannot. Uh, have an economy of infinite growth is impossible uh, not even in gaming it, 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 you just break the game if you try to do something like that so uh, that to a certain degree translates to the the real life uh, but yeah uh, enough of this for today uh, we got some uh, um, Astrox is doing a lot of good stuff here they just launching uh, some AMD I covered yesterday the 7600 I think it was as Asrox I think yeah I think it is. Um, they are doing also AMD. They uh, lowering prices. We we've been seeing a lot of Asrock lowering prices, especially on the Intel Arc. Now it's uh, the A750. It's now one hundred and eighty dollars. This is a new egg. It's got uh, at the moment it's like around two hundred, but they managed to put an extra coupon code of twenty dollars, so it uh, it's one eighty basically. It, they are getting very competitive on the low end per se which is basically the mainstream which is around 250 and below i think it's what what me might call mainstream mainly because of 
uh, more than 300, 400 dollars start, uh, you don't see people that have this kind of uh, uh, um, uh, this kind of money to, to spend around willy nilly uh, to just play some games. Um, but yeah, th th this is good. Intel Arc is improving little by little, uh, especially in terms of um, drivers and software support. Uh, they are very competitive in terms of performance. At this price point, the 750, if not mistaken, uh, works around uh, almost like a 6600, I think, if not mistaken, and around the 3060 uh, GPU, if not mistaken. Uh, I don't know by, by, by heart exactly what kind of competition the, the ARC 750 goes through. Uh, but yeah, it uh, the, the fact uh, this card is better is like the AV1 codec. You got some ray tracing capabilities here for this price. Uh, I think it's it's very good. And even the 77 is lowering a little bit. Uh, the 16 gigabytes, uh, if it is below 300 dollars, uh, it's a good deal, from what I understood. Uh, but yeah, we are going to start seeing lowering prices. I don't know if they're going to make like a. Um, a refresh on the Alchemist GPUs uh, because uh, the Battle Mage at the moment is supposedly to launch maybe uh, end of next year. So we got a little time gap there until they uh, do something uh, like refresh their, their, their GPUs. I don't know if they're going to make an Alchemist like uh, we give it to uh, like an XT or the, the TI that usually NVIDIA and um, AMD usually do, at least from the previous generation, this generation, everybody's throwing XTs, XTX, and, and TIs, and whatever, all over the place, so we'll see how it goes. Um, we got also, uh, m like, an interview from Star Wars Outlaws, and um, I don't think this is a good comparison here, uh, regarding uh, Assassin's Creed, comparing themselves to Assassin's Creed, they just, uh, even though uh, I, I don't think there's going to be as bad, uh, I think, as Assassin's Creed, in terms of how they the, the, the franchise itself degraded a little bit, uh, but uh, they talked. To the, this is um, referencing here, like the size of the planets. Uh, this is not going to be. Uh, they they are calling open world. This is not going to be an open world. O open world is uh, like uh, Zelda. Uh, it's, uh, for example, um, Assassin's Creed Black Flag was an open world. It's a huge map. Uh, when you get games of areas, they, they are not open world. They are, uh, can be open scenarios, open uh, something, but it's not open world. Uh, open world, you can transverse the world without loading screen, not changing areas with loading screens. At least that's my perception. Uh, but yeah, the size of planets um, supposedly are equivalent to two to three zones. Uh, equivalent to three zones in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I never played Assassin's Creed Odyssey. This is the one that is based more on the Greek uh, thing, I think. Um, they say that it's one of the open world games with the biggest map. I don't know what they, what this means. However, there is... Um, um, of course, it's open world in the sense that you can approach that part of the map the way you want it. There is not a lot of uh, strings attached on how you should go to, the, to that area. For sure there is, but there is some freedom on how approaching uh, some encounters and everything. Uh, the thing, the main thing is, because this is a Star Wars game, uh, the funny thing is, the, the same level of freedom, however, won't be there for traveling, as players will not be able to fly over planets and will be forced to land and take off only in certain areas. I suppose this is why the, the like the cafeterias and spaceports will work, even though supposedly you can, uh, in the universe, you can land a ship anywhere. Uh, I think it's going. Uh, if it was an approach more like to Starfield, I think I, un I understood if it was better. But because Starfield supposedly you can land on the entire planet by itself, uh, you can uh, over the cursor to uh, land on a zone and then explore there. Here, because the planets are not going to be fully explored, so you don't have access to the 100% of the planet. That's why they put it uh, like. Uh, landing zones here um yeah it's uh it's uh, if people had like expectation because i saw a lot of comparisons ah, it's going to be similar to star will no it's not going to be in terms of how you especially going to travel between planets i think you only have like uh, like space flight you only have access to the like the 
proximity zones on the planet so we have a, a little area that you can explore here and there and maybe do some salvaging here and there on some things from the, like the, the the gameplay announcement that they did you it's like a, a basically an escape until you go there but yeah uh, i don't think you're going to be able to travel as freely especially on uh, space travel as as uh, as uh, starfield that's my perception for at least from this uh, this part of the interview and especially this this quote here um but yeah uh, we got also another interview uh, from Enshrouded. Uh, I found it interesting because it seems uh, to me that they are aiming for like like a Zelda game with uh, in uh, uh, Valheim. I, I never played this game. I don't, I don't even know very well what, which kind of game it is. Uh, but the fact that I, uh, the fact that it, they are aiming for a Zelda type experience, <coughs> sorry. Um, seems pretty interesting and I saw some um, trailers for this game uh, especially the, the, this is a long interview uh, but uh, I saw some trailers on uh, how they're going about crafting you can like terraform planets you can do a lot of building similar to almost like Minecraft in terms of the mechanics how they work uh, it's not Minecraft graphics but the, the mechanics itself seem very much um, uh, very minecrafty the way you can go about it building and and um and terraforming the the the, the planet by itself and also the, i think you have like a lot of freedom spe uh, in the veins of zelda of these two last games of zelda seems pretty interesting i don't know how this is going to work uh, i will leave the steam page uh, for you to wishlist if you want to do so it's an early access game uh, it's a shame i think it should have like a demo if it's possible to to get one uh, working uh, mainly because with open worlds it's always a little bit tricky but it has a lot of destructions here as you can see some combat um, I don't know seems interesting how they're going about it, especially on the terraforming and building mechanics here supposedly I'm not sure if there is uh, some multiplayer aspects to it um, at, uh, yeah as online co-op um, seems interesting as you can see some some terraforming because you're transforming the the environment around you um and the way that you travel seems also very interesting how they're going about it uh we'll see how it goes uh, at the moment it's on early access i don't recommend early access because it's to a certain point it's a gamble uh, something might happen and they, they just cancel the, the game basically and you don't get the money there's always that risk even though it's a minimal one uh, but yeah, as you can see a lot of uh, uh, crafting and building. Uh, supposedly you can build a hub base for a party. As you can see a lot of terraforming, the way you can build things around. It's like tile base, similar to Minecraft from what I understood. Uh, but yeah, seems pretty interesting. I will wishlist it and keep an eye on it to see when the full release is coming. And of course you got a lot of uh, um, dedicated uh, skills uh, and ability trees here and there and of course for sure you have online co-op for like big bosses and something like that um and with that i'm going to get you uh, like a wish list game which is basically metal gear solid master collection uh, this is the first volume which encompasses metal gear solid the 99 uh, game uh, sons of liberty and snake eater the, the original versions i think they are going to be remastered I don't know if they're going to fine tune for uh, day and age. I don't. I don't think they are going to update the graphics. I think they are going to like update the mechanics so it's better played uh, in today's uh, PCs uh, because this is Steam. Um, but I think for, uh, one. Uh, I don't know if one of these. Uh, I think these two uh, or maybe all three just need like a controller to play with. From what I understood. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'm very hopeful this is a good release. Um, it's a shame that Kojima is not on the franchise anymore, but uh, these games are made, uh, basically directed by him. So uh, they are to a certain degree like must plays or masterpieces. They got a lot of, a lot of games afterwards and a lot of inspiration, especially after Metal Gear Solid uh, came out. Um, but yeah, afterwards we will have, this is launch uh, 24th October, but there is like the remake of Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater, which is uh, Delta? I don't remember the name, I know, but I, I wish list all of them, all three, you might want to do so if you like this, uh, this kind of games, and, and if you never played one. Uh, of the Metal Gear Solids, I really, really advise the, at least these first two, these first two, 
the the ones that I played, uh, they are uh, telling you the, 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 it's the first two, but in terms of uh, how they launched, but in terms of the timeline, first I think it's Metal Gear Solid 3, then uh, 1 and 2. Um, but yeah, uh, it's one of those that it's, uh, I think I always recommend to play them. Uh, I was lucky enough to play it basically when it came out, Metal Gear Solid 2, uh, 1 and 2, when they came out. I managed to play it on the PlayStation 2, On uh, it's the last console that I had was a PlayStation 2, so um, yeah. Uh, now for gaming deals, I got the, the Bioshock remasters are again on a deal until basically the end of the month, so 75% of the remasters are with the updated visuals. Um, the Bioshock took also 85% of the remastered version and Bioshock Infinite 75% um, of or with the season pass also 75% so around 12 bucks give or take. Uh, this is a good one, um, it's not... Um, it's not perfect and it, no game is perfect but it's a very good one at least the teams are trying to approach the execution was not flawless uh, of course but i really really enjoy it and uh, i made a, a gaming uh, a gaming series on this game here um maybe i will try to revisit one day uh, doing all three uh, in better quality of course because uh, at the time i only managed to play 1080p so uh, i would like to do some 4k gaming also uh got also the plague tail bundle uh, it's like 55 percent off so around 32 bucks um they are pretty good and uh, i really don't know um uh, how good they are uh, i think it's very narrative uh, driven and they the setting is like a medieval setting kind of sorts and I think the it's the the, the boy is as as like special powers and you there are puzzling around, uh, especially with fire because of the plague, the mouses or something like that. I, I never played the game. I uh, I found it interesting and it's one of those games that I try to keep myself off of spoilers or try to know too much uh, regarding uh, regarding the game, so I don't get uh, uh, so when I played I know uh, it's the first time that I seeing experiencing the thing. Uh, it's a hard thing to do, but sometimes uh, I prefer that to uh, try to see the game and then when I play it, it doesn't have the same feeling. Um, but yeah, the two uh, are 55% um, off. Um, and of course, I will leave all the links in the description. And finally, uh, we got Vampire. Um, it's got uh, mostly positive reviews, around 75%, so it's a good game. The story is pretty, very good from what I understood. Uh, the combat ha might have some issues on like fluidity and everything, but it's a good RPG with your choice uh, matters. So, uh, and the story is very good. I think you, if you want to play it, uh, I think uh, mainly for the story and the fact that it is an RPG when you have like choices that matter in the game itself. I think it's very interesting um, and I think it's uh, it's worth it from the reviews that I saw at the time and the fact that it's 80% off. It's a shame that these older games should start doing some uh, demos, at least some vertical slices so you can have an idea what the game is. Uh, but yeah, 80%, 8 bucks, um, I think it's a good one. And basically that's it guys, uh, I'm going to wrap up for today. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next one. So until then, Master out.